Hello everyone, welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, I cannot wait to share with you my top 10 Dollar Tree Easter decor crafts. So this is another episode of my huge I Love Spring series. I love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. And if you are new, welcome. I am Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. I am a dedicated wife, mother, and crafter. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys my top 10 Easter decor crafts from last year because I know a lot of you all are new or maybe you missed these so I just had to go ahead and share them with you to go ahead and get you inspired to get your Easter craft on also check out the rest of my I love spring series I'm gonna link in the playlist down below but without further ado go ahead and plug in your glue guns get out your glitter and paint and let's get to crafting Okay, you guys, I am so ready for spring. I cannot wait for spring to arrive. For this round of DIYs, I really want to go for a French farmhouse garden theme. I'm ready to see that greenery. So for the first DIY, we are going to take a plain white paint and that Dollar Tree Bunny Easter card. I just want to cut the bunny out of the card. So I'm going in and around the bunny and cutting a little bit of a large space and then I decided that I wanted to trim it down just a little bit. I see a lot of really beautiful specialty plates at TJ Maxx and Pier 1 Imports with bunnies on them and I just knew this sweet bunny would make of the perfect plate. So once I had my bunny cut out, I took some Mod Podge and just applied Mod Podge to the back and it was super easy. I just glued it directly onto the plate. Once I had my bunny glued on, I decided to mix up a quick batch of my homemade chalk paint. I just used a cup of regular paint and then half a cup of baking soda. And then I use a fork and I just mix it up really, really good. Now this paint is just perfect for craft projects. It's a little bit grainy, so, but for this plate and to do different signs and DIY projects, it just works perfectly. So I'm applying some of this DIY homemade chalk paint in and around around the entire plate. This is just an extra step that I wanted to take to kind of make this plate look um, customized. So I just painted the entire plate and then even in and around the spot where my bunny was, I just wanted to give this a little bit of texture and dimension. So I also mixed up a bit of gray chalk paint by just adding a couple of drops of black to my white chalk paint that I mixed up and I'm going around the edge. Um, with my paintbrush. So I'm going in and around the edge of the plate. Again, I just wanted to give it some dimension. And then I took an even smaller brush and I just added tiny, tiny, tiny bits of black. So I just dipped my brush in the black and kind of wiped it off on the side of the plate and then added in and around the edge of the plate. And then after that was dry, I did go back in with just a tiny bit of white over that black to kind of soften it up just a bit. And you guys, this bunny is so sweet. If you have a chance to grab this card, it is just the most precious bunny. And I guess they also make bunny pillows um, at one of the more high-end stores. And here she is, star of the show for the centerpiece of my French farmhouse table. I added her to this green Dollar Tree plate and then one of those silver Dollar Tree chargers. And I think she came out absolutely adorable. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to create a beautiful Pottery Barn inspired Easter basket. So I'm just taking one of those brown baskets from the Dollar Tree that you can buy in the garden section and I punched two holes in each side. And then I'm taking some pipe cleaner and I'm pushing the pipe cleaner through each hole. What I want to do is set this Easter basket down inside of it and then pipe cleaner it on. That way the outside of the basket looks like it's this really pretty kind of natural basket. I have been so in love with the Pottery Barn garden collection 
and the baskets on there are between $29 and $59. And I thought, you know what? I know we can DIY this on a budget from the Dollar Tree, so we're going for it. Now I'm going in and around the basket with some hot glue, and then I'm taking some of that Dollar Tree Spanish moss, and I'm just kind of pushing it in to the bottom of the mat basket. So just get creative with this. I will forewarn you this project makes a huge mess so be patient with yourself and your craft area. Now I'm going in and along the top of the basket and just adding more hot glue and I'm just going to continue to work the entire basket in this way. I'm going in and around the basket on the top and around the sides and once I got all the way around, I just added a little bit more hot glue, made sure that the Spanish moss was um, in and around the sides, and then that really was just fine. That was enough because I knew I wanted to stuff the basket. So the next part of this DIY is definitely optional, and again, this takes a little bit of patience, but take some of that Dollar Tree jute twine. They're selling this right now in kind of the garden and Easter section, and I'm just going to hot glue this on. What I want to do is wrap my entire basket um, handle with the jute twine. You could also use that Dollar Tree nautical rope, or you could paint the handle of your basket if you wanted. Again, what I'm going for is that pottery barn kind of natural feeling. So you're just going to continue to wrap it and then add dabs of hot glue and then wrap it some more as you go around. Now to give it that really woodland garden effect, I'm taking a Dollar Tree grapevine wreath and I'm going to take this wreath apart. So I just took it and I clipped it and now I'm going to go ahead and push it around the entire basket. So you can see there's an opening where I clipped it with my wire cutters. And then this took a little bit of work and kind of maneuvering, but I clipped it and then put it in and around the basket and then I'm just tying it with a piece of jute twine. Now it didn't fit perfectly around the basket, but it was just perfect for me. Again, I just really want to give it kind of that really natural woodland look. And then I'm taking some of the remainder of the grapevine wreath and I'm winding it in and around my basket handle. Now I had to kind of grab the twigs and then wrap Wrap the jute twine around it to get it to stay and then kind of trim it back because it was a little bit wild. Um, this project was probably the hardest one of these DIYs just because I'm not used to working with grapevine but I really wanted to go for it and give it that natural effect. Now you can see I added some Walmart bags to the bottom to kind of stuff it and then I'm using some of that Dollar Tree Excelsior grass and I'm just going to add that to the top to kind of give it that pretty natural um, just almost like I picked this fresh from the garden look. And then I'm also adding in some Dollar Tree onion grass in and around the side. I love this. I think it's so perfect to kind of look like um, Mr. Peter Cottontail has just been hippity hopping down the road and he's got this cute little basket. My mom always used to do natural Easter baskets for us kiddos. And um, she would even put real grass in our Easter baskets. Comment and let me know what kind of Easter baskets did you all have when you were a kid? So this really is reminiscent of one of my childhood Easter baskets. So here is the finished product. I just added in one of those Target Dollar Spot bunnies and I did add in a couple of Dollar Tree green berries and a couple of clips of the Dollar Tree fern. I am over the moon in love with this basket. It only cost us a couple of dollars and it looks so high end to me and definitely it was very price friendly and it just looks so natural and very French farmhouse. We're bringing the garden feeling inside without spending a ton of money and getting ready for spring. Absolutely in love with this one. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take a piece of folder that I had coffee stained. So to coffee stain a folder, you just take the folder and put some coffee on it and then bake it in the oven um, for about 20 minutes on 350. 
or at least until the coffee absorbs. And then I'm making a tag with this. So I'm taking the rest of that Dollar Tree Easter card. We don't want any waste here. And I'm cutting out the happy Easter part that was at the top of that card. I used three of those cards because I ended up making three bunny plates. I wanted to have some for my cabinet. And then I'm just going to hot glue the little happy Easter to the part of these coffee stained tags. So once I got the holes punched in my tag, I just took some of that jute twine and ran it through the top part of my tag. This is going to be perfect for those really cute Easter baskets that we're making. Very French farmhouse, French country feel here. Um, just loving this. So simple, so sweet, and so elegant. So I tied this tag to the side of my Easter basket and I think it just looks absolutely adorable. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take one of those cute little flowers and garden tins and we're going to add some Dollar Tree styrofoam to the bottom. I put a big thing of hot glue at the bottom of that and then just added in that styrofoam. Then you're going to take several bundles of the Dollar Tree lilac and you're just going to clip the stems and begin to kind of add them. The way that I added these um, lilacs in there I wanted it to look kind of wild so you can see I'm kind of bending the stems over I started from the center and then I'm working in and around and I just want to kind of bend them over almost like I just freshly picked them I know that's definitely not possible with these fake lilacs but I think Dollar Tree did a really nice job with their lilacs honestly I think they're really really pretty they've got a really nice soft light purple color and I did notice on the Pottery Barn website that they used a big giant ton of lilacs in their display with those garden baskets and I thought why not let's see if we can do that one as well and so I'm also taking some lavender and putting some lavender into the center. Now this lavender I did get at Walmart, but it was 97 cents for the bundle. Dollar Tree has lavender, but their bundles aren't quite as big. So I feel like it's a little bit more price point friendly to grab the Walmart lavender if you guys see that. It was out in both my stores in the craft section if you guys need to be able to find that. And then I'm just putting in a little bit more lilac. I wanted to turn the arrangement around and make sure that it wasn't there back here. So I'm picking in some more lilac stems. And then last but not least, I decided that I wanted to add in some the remainder of that excelsior grass. So I'm just poking that in and around the edge of the tin. You could also hot glue this if you wanted to, but you guys know me, I'll probably take this apart and do something different with it. And so I want, didn't want that part to be permanent. Now I'm adding it to the center of my table here. I had created this DIY um, two-tiered stand in another DIY. I have a bunch of DIYs I will link down below for you, but it's just a candlestick and two plates glued together and then some greenery underneath. So here it is. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's the perfect pop of color for all of this greenery. I love how the greens and the browns and the creams and kind of some of those grays mixed together. And then with that purple, it just feels so fresh and so springy. So I can't wait for spring. Is anyone else doing any spring dreaming? You guys comment and let me know. If you're just ready, ready for some spring vibes, a little bit of warm weather, and some greens. These greens definitely made me smile. So here's one of those um, Pottery Barn baskets I just had to share with you guys, and we're going to make one very similar to this. So you're going to take a Dollar Tree Easter basket. I chose the green because I'm going to be adding a lot of green moss to this basket. So you're just going to hot glue the side of your basket, and I tried to kind of do this in strips. 
So also if you pull the moss apart just a little bit and then press it onto there, you'll make it go a little bit further. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I just wanted to create one of those Pottery Barn inspired um, baskets. So I just love how they have the green, greenery all the way around them. I've also seen a lot of these greenery baskets at TJ Maxx. So I really love them, but they're so pricey and I knew we could do this on a super tiny budget. So definitely if you guys have a chance, this is just that green basket from Dollar Tree in the Easter section and then some of that Dollar Tree greenery moss that I'm gluing onto here. Now this does take some patience and makes a huge mess but hang in there the results are pretty awesome. Now that I'm done gluing in and around the sides I'm just gluing the top part of the basket. This is definitely optional but I wanted it to kind of look like the whole basket was made of greenery. Now, once I had the greenery added to my basket in and around the sides, the handle, I went in with some of my Suave hairspray. I did this outside so it was nice and ventilated and I gave it about four or five coats. So I sprayed the hairspray on and then gave it some coats. And then I filled the center part of my basket with just a little bit of that Spanish moss and some Excelsior grass. And then these darling little Dollar Tree speckled eggs looked just perfect. My store had just gotten them in so I grabbed a couple of packets of those and I'm really loving this rich farmhouse feel so pretty so festive for a lovely springtime you guys comment and let me know if you're loving this as well Next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to do a repaint of this cute little spring Easter bunny. Now you guys, I am in love with this bunny and I really love the little polka dot and the little pink bow, but for my French farmhouse decor, I decided I wanted to tone it down just a little bit. Shocker. I know I love pink and sparkles, but I did go over this with some of the um, homemade chalk paint that I had created. I love the bunny's face and the little ears, so I'm leaving that alone. And once I had chalk painted a little bit of white and gray on the base of this, I went in with kind of just a little bit of black um, and made some stripes down the center part um, just to kind of give it some dimension and then I also went in and along the top part of the bunny sign um, to give it a little bit of dimension as well again this is totally optional and you guys I love the sign in its original form but just to kind of blend in and not take over this vignette that I'm creating I wanted to tone it down just a bit I did have to have my sparkle though you guys so I'm adding that little spring banner back on too cute and too irresistible so in love with this and I'm redoing my cabinet I added the little bunny to the side here and then I added some greenery I'm not finished with this I was crafting so much today I didn't quite get um, everything I wanted done but I'm working on this cabinet so you may see me redecorate this in a future video but I'm really loving it for now so cute and ready I for spring. I can't wait to share with you this beautiful Dollar Tree rustic garden spring French farmhouse style wreath inspired by the last round of DIYs that we did with a very garden spring French farmhouse flair so let's get to this I cannot wait to share this with you guys. For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a really beautiful French farmhouse style wreath. So I'm taking a wire wreath form from Dollar Tree and then I'm taking some evergreen garland. This is inexpensive garland I had left over from Christmas and I'm just taking the evergreen branches and looping them in and around the edges of the wire garland. I used two pieces of garland to create this base. You could also use a grapevine vase or really whatever kind of base you have on hand would work. And then now that I have my garland created, I want to make an Olivia bow. So I'm using this wired 
black and burlap striped ribbon that I found at Walmart. It was $5 for the roll, but it was definitely worth the splurge for this because I knew I wanted to tie in a blessed sign DIY that I made. So you're just going to take the ribbon and loop it over on itself three times and then you're going to cut two little notches in the center. I do have some Olivia Bow wreath tutorials that I will link down below. So just cut two tiny notches in either side of your ribbon and be careful don't cut too far because you don't want the bow to fall apart. And then take a pipe cleaner and you're just going to twist the pipe cleaner on and then pull your loops out. You can also dovetail your ends by cutting upwards in um, a triangle direction. I guess that makes sense. I don't know. Just make the end of your bow look pretty. Okay, so now that we've got our bow ready to roll, we're going to do a bit of fluffing here. So you're just going to take the ribbon to make that dovetail in and crease it and then cut upwards. Be careful when you're cutting upward. I also decided to add in a little bit of burlap to the back of this bow just to give it some dimension and texture. This was just some burlap that I had left over from another project. I believe I got it at Walmart, but Dollar Tree also carries burlap ribbon. Okay, so now we're going to take um, a longer piece of burlap ribbon and I'm just going to loop it in and around the entire wreath. So just use those evergreen branches to kind of twist tie your burlap on. There's no real rhyme or reason. You just want to add some of that in. Then I'm going to take this piece of Dollar Tree greenery and take the evergreen and just kind of loop it around the base of this wreath. I want it to kind of stick out at the bottom. I want this wreath to look very French farmhouse, blooming woodland rustic theme. So I want to use a lot of greenery and neutral burlaps. Now I'm just twist tying my bow on and then I'm going to give it a bit of a fluffing. That's really the secret to a bow is just continue to give it a nice good fluffing. Once I had my greenery on, I decided to add in one of those Dollar Tree grapevine wreath bases. This is optional, but I did want to give it that rustic woodland theme, so I'm just taking the little green evergreens and twist tying them on. So you just, I did that in three different places, and then I took the little greenery piece and I looped it in and over the wreath, kind of to give it some more stability and also some dimension on this other side. So all of the greenery that I'm using, everything that I'm using in this wreath is from Dollar Tree except for the ribbon for the bow. And I believe that burlap also came from Walmart from last year, the year before last, but again, Dollar Tree also carries burlap. So I'm just taking some of that Dollar Tree onion grass. I poked a big, um, <laughs> I poked a big grouping of onion grass up at the top and down below and then off to the side. And then you will see me kind of take it apart just a little bit and hot glue it in just to give it that extra bit of stability. I'm also using this piece of burlap to kind of go in and around the back of the wreath. I wanted to fill the wreath out. I really love to go really, really over the top with my creations. And so... Anyway, but yeah, so now I'm just adding in some greenery and you guys can see me dancing around. So I decided to have a just full out wreath crafting day. I was blasting Mumford and Sons. I love their music. I really was doing a jig throughout this whole video. So you guys, this is your laugh for the day. Super awkward mom dancing. There you go. So anyway, I'm just continuing to add in some of the Dollar Tree onion grass and some little pieces of greenery. I just took some wire cutters and cut these pieces down. And now I have in some little white bits and pieces that I wanted to add in. This is just more Dollar Tree florals. They carry some of those little white florals. And then I'm also adding in some white lilacs. These are so pretty. I used them in my centerpiece for my last DIY. If you guys need some spring inspiration, I've been doing a ton of spring and Easter DIYs. So I'm just hot gluing the ends of these and then putting them into the wreath. 
Now to give this wreath a little bit of a wow factor, I'm taking some of those Dollar Tree clay pots and adding a twist tie into the center and just twist tying it at the base and then leaving a little spot that I can twist tie it onto the wreath. Now this definitely took some maneuvering. I just twist tied it into the wire base part of the wreath. Make sure you get it twist tied in really good because you don't want these flopping out. Um, so. I did have to really get in there and twist tie it a bunch and then I'm adding tons and tons of hot glue to the base of those little pots and now I just added some hot glue to the center and I'm adding in some beautiful Dollar Tree moss again to give it that really pretty rustic woodland kind of Frenchy um, springtime really feel. Now I'm just adding in another layer of bows to the base of this wreath. I just decided on this part to use some of that jute twine. That way you couldn't see any funky colors. So I just tied that on to the base of the wreath. And now you're gonna see me adding in some of those Dollar Tree ferns. I've really been loving these. I think they look pretty realistic and they're inexpensive. They come five or six on a bundle. And then I decided to clip off some fake lavender or fake lavender yeah this was from the lavender bundle that I used in another DIY so I just clipped off a couple of little pieces I did want to give this wreath some sprigs of color I also added in this super cute little purple bird that I found last season I believe at TJ Maxx for a couple of dollars um, I wanted a smaller more realistic looking bird but I didn't have any on hand and I wanted to finish this project so Anywho's, so I'm adding in now a bit of moss to the base of the bird and now I'm taking some of those really pretty Dollar Tree speckled eggs. I'm adding in some hot glue and just hot gluing them in and around the wreath. And then I just continue to add some more eggs into the center of my bow and some greenery just to kind of fill things out a bit. And I am so over the moon in love with this creation. I have really been wanting to get my hands on some really pretty black and white ribbon. Again, I did that bless sign and you guys are going to see it as I pan around a little bit later in this video, but here's a beautiful close up. I am very thrilled with this super inexpensive, almost all Dollar Tree items. And I think this came out very high end um, for a teeny tiny budget. So for my candle, I'm just burning one of my Christmas candles. Actually, it was Noel, but it was green. So I went ahead and added it to this tablescape. This is the tablescape that we created with the six DIY Dollar Tree French Farmhouse Easter baskets. This was my inspiration for this wreath, and I think it really works really well. I'm really pleased with it. And the other thing I wanted to do too is just to take you guys outside. A lot of you asked how my garden bike floral is doing. Again, we did this in another DIY that you can find a couple videos back. I did a really cute little Dollar Tree um, bike, but here are some of my spring flowers. They're popping out of the ground and I cannot resist sharing that with you guys. Also, my little spring floral in the bike is holding up pretty good considering how much rain and crazy weather we've had and one of you asked to be introduced to Tinky my cat and there she is she was hanging out with me for just a bit outside it was actually kind of warm today we were able to get outside for just a little bit and then of course she had to come in uh, to visit with me 
and see what was going on in my crafty land. The other thing I wanted to share with you guys is I'm also changing out my Grove Collaborative Mrs. Myers cleaning scents to the honeysuckle to give some of those spring vibes. I do have a coupon code below if you guys want to try some delicious smelling cleaners. You can get a five piece free gift set with a $20 purchase. And thank you to everyone who has used my coupon code. So here's just an overview of how my dining room is looking. I am so over the moon in love with this. Now, I do feel like I need to add in just a tiny bit of some very thin, maybe pastel pink florals. The other thing is, you guys, I found pastel candy corn at Tuesday morning, in case you're looking for that. Any hoozy, here's that blessed sign, and this is why I wanted to find that black and white ribbon to kind of tie this all together. Um, I have the blessed sign hanging over my craft cabinet there, and then moving into my dining room, and just doing a quick little pan around. I did take all of the greenery out of that cabinet. I really wasn't pleased with that. I think I just want to keep it neutrals. And then here is my tablescape, again with those DIYs that we created. I'm kind of crushing on this, and I'm so ready for spring. I hope you guys are loving this. Comment and let me know what is your favorite thing about spring dreaming or your favorite plant that grows in the springtime. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, we are going to create this really beautiful springtime Easter deco mesh wreath. For this wreath, you're going to need a wire wreath form from the Dollar Tree. I used four rolls of the Dollar Tree deco mesh, this really cute Easter sign, and then some really beautiful flowers. Customize this to whatever you love. So at the top of this, I am just taking a pipe cleaner and I'm twisting on the little sign. Here you can see at the top and then I'm going to add pipe cleaners to the little separators. You can see these little wire separators on the wreath. I'm going to begin and add the deco mesh to where those little separators are. I guess that's what you would call them. Anyway, I'm just twist tying this pipe cleaner on and then I'm going to get out the Dollar Tree white deco mesh and the pink deco mesh. Again, you guys use whatever colors you love and they also do have deco mesh at some of the craft stores. So I'm gathering these together and then I'm twist tying them on. I'm just tw twisting about twice and then I'm going up to the next spot on this wreath form where the little wire bracket is, I guess you would call it. I'm pinching it together and then I'm going in with another pipe cleaner and I'm going to pipe cleaner that on. So I'm just going to continue to do this on the entire wreath base. I believe there's about six brackets on each base and so I'm kind of pulling these together and making a little poof and then I'm going to where that bracket is and I'm pipe cleanering it on. This does not have to be perfect because we're going to add a ton of florals to this. And really, a deco mesh does not have to be perfect. It's very forgiving, so don't be afraid. You guys totally can do this. So you can see I'm just going around the entire wreath form until I get back to my start starting point, which is at my base. And then I'm going to go ahead and pipe cleaner that spot on. Then I'm going to go in with some more pipe cleaners and in between the spots, I'm going to add in that green deco mesh. So I'm just going around the entire wreath again and adding in the green deco mesh. Also, I'm kind of pulling the mesh out into kind of a poof, you can see. So I'm not pulling it tight onto the wire wreath form. I'm kind of leaving a little bit of a poof. Um, that will give your wreath some extra fluffiness, which I love because I love to make a really over-the-top creation. So I went around the entire wreath with that green deco mesh. And then on the inside of this frame is where I want to add another layer of deco mesh. So in between those poofs, I'm going in with another pipe cleaner and I'm going to pipe cleaner on another layer of deco mesh. And this is going to be more toward the inside of the wreath frame. So just twist tie that on. 
give just a little bit of a poof. Now these poofs I'm not doing quite as thick because I don't want to cover up my sign. Comment and let me know if you guys love making deco mesh wreaths or if you're a little bit intimidated by deco mesh. I always kind of was and I watched some tutorials and then I just went ahead and went for it. So I really hope this is helping you all and comment and let me know also if you have questions. So again, I'm just going around the entire wreath and pipe cleaner I'm adding the green deco mesh with a new pipe cleaner. Again, this is in between the spots where the yellow pipe cleaner was added. And then once I get to the base, I just pipe cleaner that on. And then on that second round of loops with those second row of pipe cleaners, I'm adding in the rest of that pink and white mesh. This is definitely optional, but again, I want to fill this out just a bit and that way it'll have more dimension. Also be careful not to completely cover up your sign. You can tell that that was a bit of a challenge on this wreath because this sign was so large, but I wanted to make sure that I used everything from the Dollar Tree. So continue until you get all of that pink and white mesh pipe cleanered on and then I did go in at the end and add one more roll of deco mesh of the pink to the outside layers. Now we're just going to make a an Olivia bow and I'm using this kind of plaid wired ribbon from the Dollar Tree so you're going to take the ribbon and loop it over on itself. This is going to be a quadruple layered bow so just starting with the base we're just going to do where we have two loops on our Olivia bow. I do have some bow tutorials linked down below and I'm just going to pipe cleaner this together and then I'm going to give it a bit of a fluffing. Now we're going to make another Olivia bow. You're just going to take your ribbon and loop it over on itself. This time we're going to do three loops and then you find the center of your ribbon. You're going to fold it to find your center, fold it back, and then cut a little notch in each side of your bow. Don't cut too far because you don't want your ribbon and bow to fall apart. And then you're just going to tie that together with the original pipe cleaner that you used on that first bow. You're going to want to fluff this out really nice. I love these bows. They're super duper easy and a great way to add dimension to your wreath by doing all of the different layers. Again, you guys get creative. Use your favorite ribbons. Use whatever colors you love. You don't have to use this many ribbons, but I do love to go over the top with my large fancy bow for this Easter wreath. Now I'm just adding in some of that Dollar Tree pink ribbon. I did another Olivia bow, but this time I just did two loops and then I'm taking it and pipe cleaner in it all together and then giving it a nice good fluffing and then this is what I'm going to use to tie onto my wreath. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY we're going to create a beautiful little bird's nest out of an egg carton. This is kind of going to go in and along with the wreath so I wanted to share this one with you guys first before we finish our wreath. So I'm just taking a pipe cleaner and pipe cleanering on to the inside of this little egg carton and then twisting it in the back because I want to have the pipe cleaner on the back to be able to tie this onto our wreath. And then I'm just taking some of that Dollar Tree. It was a mix of a Celsius grass and paper shred and I'm hot gluing on the outside of my little egg carton and I'm adding some to the inside as well. And then, so I just wanna create a little bird's nest with this Excelsior grass and paper shred mixture that I had left over from another project. And then I'm going to be adding in some of those really cute little Dollar Tree speckled eggs and then some of the smaller eggs that you get in a pack of, I believe, 12. So I'm adding some hot glue to the Dollar Tree speckled egg putting that in there, holding it down, then adding some more dabs of hot glue and adding in some of those mini eggs. And this is gonna go perfectly into our wreath. And I'm gonna show you guys how we finish this wreath in just a minute, but I did wanna go ahead and prep you guys on this, some of the Dollar Tree DIYs that we're gonna add into this wreath. You could also use this little bird's nest in and around your Easter decor. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a fancy egg. So we're going to take one of those speckled eggs and then take some of that Dollar Tree jute twine and hot glue in and around the egg and then hot glue the twine around the egg. Again, this is going to be used in our wreath, but you guys could create these and use them in a decorative vignette for Easter with some sweet little 
eggs, bird's nest, just whatever you might want a fancy egg for. So we're continuing to wrap the jute twine. I believe I wrapped it three times around and hot glued it. And then I made an easy little shoelace bow. And a shoelace bow is just how you would tie your shoes. And then I'm going to hot glue that onto the side of my little egg. Again, this is a fancy Easter egg. You guys know how I love fancy. So I'm going to apply that to the side of the egg. And then I went in with just one tiny little stray lilac to give it a little uh, floral dimension and then a, just a little jute twine bow that I tied just like I would tie my shoelaces. And so here it is. And then I am going to add that into the bow that I'm adding in to my wreath. I think it came out so adorable, so fancy and absolutely perfect for our beautiful pastel Easter vignettes. So now we're going to go in and begin to finish our wreath. I'm adding in the bow. Remember we had a little pipe cleaner attached to that. So I'm just going to pipe cleaner it on to my wreath. And then of course, this is the secret to my bows. I just give my bow a good fluffing. So when you create an Olivia bow, the little notches that you cut in it allow you to be able to fluff your bow. So you can move those little um, loops in and around whatever you want to show really nicely. Remember not to cover up the entire bunny sign with your bow. So you can just kind of play with that. And then I took some of that plaid ribbon and I'm just adding it in to the little pipe cleaners in and around the side of this wreath. I wanted to give it a little bit to mention and then also tie in the bow at the bottom. So you're just gonna pipe cleaner this on, super easy. And then you can kind of arrange it because this is wired ribbon, just arrange it in and around how you want it to look. Again, be careful not to cover up the sign. That was a big challenge with this wreath. I knew it was gonna be because of how big the sign was, but I couldn't resist this adorable sign. And then I just went in and clipped off the pipe cleaners. Now that step might be optional. You might wanna leave those pipe cleaners on. I kind of realized that later. Anyway, I'm adding the rest of the leftover ribbon from the Olivia bow up to the top. So I just took two loops of ribbon and then I'm tying it on with some of that Dollar Tree raffia. I'm going to use some raffia in and around this wreath. It was the perfect addition, I felt like, for an Easter wreath. Also, I'm going to dovetail my ends of my ribbon by just creasing them and cutting upward to create that really cute little boutique triangle. Now I'm going in and I'm adding in that little bird nest that we created. I really love that we created it with that eggshell crate because it's super light so it doesn't weigh the wreath down anymore. Now I'm adding in some of that Dollar Tree raffia. So I'm just tying it around one of the deco mesh loops. Again, if I would have left that pipe cleaner on, I could have just used the pipe cleaner. But either way, you guys are totally fine. And then I did have to trim off some of the raffia because it got a little wild and crazy. And then note to self right there, you guys, more awkward mom dancing. <laughs> I love to dance while I'm making wreaths. Okay, so now we're adding in some of those Dollar Tree ferns. You guys, I am really loving their ferns. I think they look super realistic and they're a great way to kind of add the outside inside. I also added in some of those cute little pink Dollar Tree hydrangeas and then some of those white berries up to the top and then I'm just adding in a little bit more of that leftover burlap ribbon. You guys get creative with this. Add as many little doodads as you like. You can also see down at the bottom I added in a little bit of a fern um, and that fancy egg and then here it is. I am so in love with this. I did add in two. Dollar Tree has these really beautiful kind of trailing pink and white florals. I didn't look to see what they were called, but if you guys see those, grab those. Those are super expensive in the regular craft stores. I just added a couple of those picks in just to kind of give this wreath some dimension. So I really hope you all are loving this. I had so much fun creating this. Could not wait to share it with you. And there's some of those Dollar Tree speckled eggs, just a little bit of raffia and some lilacs and then some of those trailing flowers and it just really rounded this creation out really well. I really feel like this wreath is very, very high end. We used every single thing from the Dollar Tree. So you guys can definitely do this. Okay. For the next Dolly Tree DIY, we're going to create a super adorable little Easter Bunny banner using the Dolly Tree treat sacks. So the Dolly Tree treat sacks come four to a pack and you're just going to take the treat sacks and cut out the front part with the bunny on it. I'm just cutting in and along the edge of the scene. Oh, stop. Can't believe 
time I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening and midnight Such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that Once you have all of your treat sacks cut out, you can take a piece of jute twine, flip them over, and then hot glue a dab of hot glue across the top part of your treat sack, and then just flip it over, and that will create a nice little banner for your cute little Easter Bunny Dollar Tree treat sack banner. So do it to the next one, and I just kind of eyeballed how far apart I wanted these. These are going to go in my kitchen on my little hutch, so I knew I wanted it to be about a certain length, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So another thing that would be really cute to do too would be to tie some ribbon in between these, and so I'm just going to go ahead and continue to run that strip of hot glue down the top part of the treat sack lay the jute twine on top of that and then flip them over and then kind of press down um, where you're gluing. And then I'm adding them to this cute little banner that we made in one of my Valentine DIYs. It's just some burlap and lace that I had that I tied some pink ribbon onto. So I'm taking the little ties and just tying my garland onto here. Again, you could tie some ribbon onto your little bunny banner or just leave it as is, depending upon how you want it. And I think this is so adorable. This is going on my kitchen hutch. Very perfect for Easter. It goes perfectly with this banner. I was so excited for this easy, easy, cute little project. I think you could even do this one with your kiddos. Um, just supervise when you're using the hot glue. Super fun. It would also look really great on a mantle. Unexpected love was found. For the next Dolly Tree DIY, we're going to create kind of a cluster of hanging Easter eggs. So I'm taking that nautical rope from Dolly Tree and I'm taking four of those larger Easter eggs. I added the first egg with the little loop. They have little loops on the ends and then I'm adding in some of those smaller kind of sparkling eggs and then I'm adding another large egg and then a smaller egg until I can get them all kind of into a loop. Now my idea is to use this outside on my little bike. I also tied a little raffia bow on top, but since it was absolutely freezing and supposed to snow this weekend, I decided just to loop them into this vase and added some extra leftover flowers to it. I'm not sure what I think about this, you guys. It's kind of crazy. Comment and let me know what you think. It's totally okay if you laugh at this one, but I thought it was actually kind of cute. I really think it would be great too to use um, dropping down from a chandelier. It didn't quite match my French farmhouse, but in my kitchen, I am going for these fun pastels. I also found pastel candy corn at Tuesday morning if you guys need some of that. You're the rose in, in today's video, I will be sharing with you how to create a really beautiful over the top spring floral arrangement using mostly items from the Dollar Tree. So, I get a lot of questions about my mantle displays. I want to dedicate one video to this. So I'm going to be removing my Valentine's Day floral arrangement. I also created this using mostly items from the Dollar Tree and I do have a video where I created this but when I take apart a display I group all the items together with greenery together and then florals together. And then the next thing I like to do is I like to clean off my mantle. I clean it off with my favorite springtime fragrance by Mrs. Myers. Um, the honeysuckle. It is so delicious. If you guys want to try some of this, I do have a five piece free gift set available with my coupon code. And then I also like to give my mirror a really good cleaning, kind of a little spring cleaning and decorating at the same time. So we're going to start out with one of those Dollar Tree floral planters. And what I did is just painted this one white. And then I'm adding a big giant dollop of hot glue to the base of this and then a styrofoam block. My idea is to make a two-tiered floral planter. So now I'm just adding more hot glue to that first piece of styrofoam and I'm going to glue another piece of styrofoam on top of that. Now this is styrofoam from the Dollar Tree. It's the white square styrofoam and I just cut that second one in half. Now I want to glue another Dollar Tree flowers and garden planter on top of this one. 
I was going to paint this white so it would match, but I want this floral arrangement to really feel like we're gardening outside, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go in with some sandpaper and distress the white paint that I had originally painted on that first planter to kind of give it a little bit more of an aged look and match in more with that galvanized kind of metal container. And then I'm adding in another piece of styrofoam to the top. So in total, this took two blocks of the, dyro the styrofoam um, floral foam from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm taking a big long piece of onion grass and I'm just positioning them where I feel like they're gonna display nicely. So I decided to go ahead and poke one end to the top and then one over to the side. And you guys get creative with this. I really want this floral arrangement to speak springtime. I want my cute little bunny that I found at TJ Maxx to look like he's over there kind of hanging out in a lot of greenery. So I always start with my greenery first. I'm also adding in a Dollar Tree fern to the top. I'm going to add in one of those Dollar Tree sprigs of pink cherry blossoms and then I'm adding in that really tall white Dollar Tree floral. I cannot for the life of me remember which one that one is. Comment and let me know if you guys know. I added one of those to the top and then off to the right hand side and then I'm adding in another Dollar Tree white cherry blossom to kind of offset that really tall one. And then I'm adding in some of those Walmart lavender picks and then some Dollar Tree just white bright roses. So really get creative. Again, you guys customize this to your colors and use what you have on hand. I'm using everything I have on hand. I'm really just reworking this floral. And I found this beautiful draping piece of greenery at Michael's. I don't know if you guys saw more awkward mom dancing in this video. I'm listening to my Mumford and Sons again. And you guys liked it when I danced last time. Anyway, onto the floral. Add in more of that beautiful draping greenery to the other side to offset the one on the other side. Now I'm just going to begin to add in some more greenery to the back. Again, I really want this floral to scream spring. I do have a really beautiful vintage garland that I picked up at the thrift store, believe it or not. And it's just greenery with kind of some trailing white flowers. They do have some similar ones like these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby if you guys need a garland. You could also use more florals to kind of create this cascading look. I had this on hand, so if you guys have some garlands, just kind of drape some greenery in and around the back and off to the side. Again, I really want this floral to appear like my bunny is out in the woods and or in the garden and it's blooming and overflowing with greenery and springtime vibes and all that wonderful um, stuff for spring. <laughs> Now that I have my greenery added, I'm using three to four long stem pale pink roses. These were the same ones I used in my Valentine display. I'm just reworking them, and when I'm poking them into the styrofoam, I'm leaving them very long on their stem. That way they kind of drape out and really look very gardeny. I also would tell you for this floral arrangement, I used some double-sided sticky tape underneath the floral arrangement to make sure that it didn't move around. I also had this small little hand weight that you used to work out with that I decided to add into the base. I just kind of scooted it down where the styrofoam wasn't just to be sure that this doesn't um, topple off. Some of those greenery pieces that I added from Michael's are a bit heavy, and so I really wanted this to stabilize. Now, you guys could also use rocks in the bottom of your planter. You could use sand, um, anything that has just a bit of weight to it if you feel like you need that because of the tear at the top and some of the floors are kind of cascading over. Um, and then I just added in some more onion grass, a little bit of moss, and a couple of pieces of those Dollar Tree ferns to kind of cover 
in and around that area and to really give it that blooming effect. I also decided to add in some lavender and some pink to my bunny's hairpiece. She didn't have any and I really wanted it to kind of go together very custom like she's been playing in this little grouping of flowers. Um, so here is the floral arrangement. I hope you guys are loving it. Comment and let me know what you think about the rework on this. If you like this two-tier planter idea, I really think it's wonderful. I think it came out very high-end, very custom, something you would see in um, a craft store or a floral store for quite a bit more. And we did it using mostly items from the Dollar Tree and some things that we had on hand. And I love the subtlety of the little bunny poking out. So now to my little chair planter off to the side, I'm just adding in some more Dollar Tree, just little white florals. And then I'm kind of poking them in and around to kind of drape them out. I added in some of that Dollar Tree paper shred and then some of that Dollar Tree moss on top of the paper shred. So the paper shred acted more as a filler. Um, and then a little Dollar Tree fern. And then Dollar Tree has these really cute little speckled eggs. I decided to add the eggs into this little basket or this little um, cherub statue, just kind of off to the side. I may go back in as it gets closer to Easter and add some egg picks to this floral arrangement, but I feel like for now, and then I also put in some of those cute little Dollar Tree carrots. They're so adorable. I also have a DIY on um, doing your own carrots using toilet paper rolls. If you guys want to go back and check that out, I have a spring Easter Valentine playlist with a lot of different spring Easter kind of bridal DIYs. So I wanted to share with you all, I created this floral arrangement to mix in with the really beautiful French farmhouse wreath that we did last week. These are also linked in my playlist and also the big tablescape that we did that's kind of very French farmhouse inspired. So I am in love with this. You guys comment and let me know what you think about this. I really loved the Valentine's Day floral and it's actually very similar. I loved the Valentine's Day floral so much, but I wanted to pull a little bit of the pink out, add in that purple to tie in with my dining room and then just put in a couple of roses kind of staggered in and around. And then there's my little bunny poking out from her beautiful little garden display here. Again, I think as Easter approaches, I may add like a cute little burlap kind of banner draped underneath the mantle or a couple of little eggs popped in. I'm not really sure. Comment and let me know if you guys think this needs something else or if it's over the top enough. You guys know I love to go over the top. So I wanted to give you just a little peek around my living room. Here it is from a further back view. I think it goes really nicely with this blessed sign Dollar Tree DIY that we created. And then there's that Dollar Tree DIY wreath that I shared with you guys in the last video. Again, I will have that in my Dollar Tree Spring playlist. And then here's a beautiful Dollar Tree Pottery Barn inspired garden baskets that I shared with you all. I am really in love with this. This is the first time I really played with so many inspiring greens, but again, I was really inspired by Pottery Barn, by spring, and just really being ready for spring to be here. I am so ready for that. Um, I love all the seasons, but I definitely feel like spring is one that I anxiously look forward to that transition because I do love to garden. You guys comment and let me know if you like to play in your garden. Do you have a vegetable garden? Do you have a flower garden? I would love to hear what you'll have going on and what your favorite spring fun thing is that you look forward to. Maybe birds or flowers or gardens. Anyway, I hope you guys are loving this DIY. I hope you're inspired again. And I thank you for blessing me with all of your kind comments. And just here's another peek around my home. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time. Morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Un 
unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm honest You're the leaves in mid-August And I've come out here to say so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is such a blessing and an honor to have you all here. Again, if you are new, welcome. I am Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home and I am a dedicated wife, mama, and crafter. And I love to share with y'all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. You do not have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. For everybody that comes back and loves on me and that comments and shares, I just want to hug your hearts all so tight. Thank you. It is a blessing and an honor to be here. It is a blessing and an honor for you all to watch my videos. I just cannot imagine a more wonderful thing to be able to share what I do, my love of crafting and home decor and organizing and tidying and just making your homes beautiful. Um, I love to share that with you all. So thank you for being here. You guys just keep going, keep me going on this YouTube journey. So also I wanted to let you all know I have an Aldea's Romantic Home a Facebook group page. A lot of crafty friends over there. It is such a kind little community request to join my Facebook group page. I'll approve your request and you can post photos of your DIY projects and your home decor. And just, I love to see what you guys are up to. Also tag me over on Olivia's Romantic Home Instagram. I'll share your beautiful projects on my story. I also say good morning to you all every morning with a good morning cup of coffee. So thank you guys again. It is a blessing and an honor to be here until the next video. Remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. You're the leaves in mid-August And I've come out here to say